Welcome to this video tutorial on how to add environmental lighting to your scenes in Rhino using HDRIs. HDRIs can give our scenes accurate environmental lighting that reflects the colour of the sun and the sky in our scenes to give us more nuanced atmospheric visuals. In this video we're going to be using free HDRIs that we're going to download from a website called Polyhaven. Polyhaven is a great resource for different textures and assets and we're going to be using Polyhaven's HDRI library to bring in some environmental lighting into our scene in Rhino. For this particular tutorial I'm going to use the Skies HDRI and we're going to use this Pure Sky asset here which we can just click and download from Polyhaven. These are all free assets we can use and for this particular tutorial I'm just going to use the 2K version but if you want a higher resolution you can also download this in higher resolutions from this website as well. Once we've downloaded this we're then going to go back to our Rhino file and we're going to add this HDRI into our environmental lighting in our scene. To do this we're first going to switch our viewport mode from shaded to rendered so we can see what the scene looks like with rendered lighting. At the moment you'll see it's quite white, it's a bit sort of static, quite a kind of vague overall lighting that we're getting from the skylight at the moment but we're going to switch this out with our new HDRI we've downloaded. To access our environments we need to go to the render tools tab in our top menu and under this little dome icon we can access the environments panel. If we left click that that will open it in the left hand side of our screen here. Now by default we'll have the studio environment on which is giving us this default lighting in our scene but to create a new environment we just need to click on this little plus tab in the corner here and add in a basic environment. At the moment this would just be called basic environment and you'll see it's got just a grey background colour and no image applied to it. Under the background image we're going to click on the little folder here and we're going to browse for our new HDRI we've just downloaded which is this sunset image and hit open there and that's going to load that image into our environmental scene. Now if we click back on our basic environment you'll then see that background image has been loaded the projection is set to automatic and it will automatically know that this is a spherical HDRI that's going to wrap around our model. You can also preview the texture here. Now at the moment the intensity is 1 and we've got no rotation but we might need to slightly adjust these when we add it into our scene. To apply this environment to our model we can either right click and click set for all environment channels or we can also go to render, the render properties tab and under the background and lighting we can set this environment here. Now I kind of prefer to do it this way because it's a bit clearer to see exactly what you're setting your environment for. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the 360 environment and under studio we're just going to click this little arrow and we're going to replace it for our new basic environment here. We're going to also do the same for the reflections here and we're going to do the same for the skylight. So we're switching all of these out for our basic environment that we've just added in with our new HDRI and then we're going to hit OK. Once that's been applied you'll then see the preview slightly change. We've got this kind of bright sky in the background and you can see we've got a little bit of orange that's picking up the colour and the blue from this HDRI. Now at the moment this looks really exposed and you can kind of tell that because it's very bright in the corners and we're sort of losing some of the definition on our model. A good way to properly check this is to actually switch from your rendered mode to your ray traced mode here and this will show us an actual kind of preview of what it looks like when it's rendered and you'll see here that this is actually even worse it's even more overexposed in this option so this means we're going to have to lower the intensity of this down in order to see our model now depending on the HDRI you choose you might need to kind of change the intensity to suit the particular environment for this one I'm going to lower this down to a sort of 0.2, 0.3 and there we're getting much better definition in that model. You can start to kind of see the tone of the sun that it's giving the model here, some of the blue from the sky as well so it's kind of picking up on all those beautiful light qualities that we're getting from this particular HDRI. It might also be that now you've added this in you want to tweak the direction of the sun we're not actually using a sun model for this, the lighting is purely driven by our image texture. 
but the kind of formation of the light and shadow here is based upon the location of the sun in that image which we can kind of see there in the background. In order to move this we just need to rotate our HDRI around and we can use the rotation tab to do this. So I can type in 90 here and it will just flip that around and give us slightly different lighting. So this is how we change the direction of that lighting in our scene using the rotation tab on our HDRI. Now because we've lowered the intensity it's also darkened up the sky and you'll find because we've added this particular environment for both our background and our lighting model when I change this intensity button it's going to change it for both the background and the lighting of the model. Sometimes you want to separate these so you want the sky to be a bit brighter but the lighting to remain the same. To do this, what I'll usually do is just right click on my environment here, select copy, and then we're going to right click again and paste it. So we've got a copy of that environment. And I'm just going to rename this particular one to replace this and kind of give it a different background name so I know that it's the background piece and not the lighting. So we're just going to call it background here. Now we've got that as a kind of copy of our environment, I'm going to go back to the render and render properties. And under my background tab, instead of the basic environment, I'm going to be using the basic environment background this time. And then we're going to hit OK. Now we won't see any change for now, but if we select that background option and we start to brighten up the sky, you'll see the kind of background sky will slightly brighten, but the lighting will remain the same. So we can actually start to tweak these independently of one another. So we still have the matching sky to the background, but we can brighten this up separate from our lighting channel. You can tell which kind of elements our environments are added to just by the little icons in the corner here. You'll see if I hover over this basic environment, we've got this little downward arrow that represents that it's being used for our lighting or our skylight and this little kind of bouncing arrow that represents that it's being used for our reflections in our scene. If I scroll down to the other one, the basic environment background, you'll see it's got a little kind of 360 arrow that represents that it's being used as a 360 background. So we can use different environments for different aspects of our scene when lighting, and this can be particularly helpful when you want to kind of brighten certain things and leave other things slightly muted. So that was just a quick video tutorial on how you add HDRIs into your scenes in Rhino. These provide a lot more accurate lighting and a lot more nuanced lighting that can be based upon the colour of skies and different environmental qualities that you want to give your models. I hope you found this video tutorial useful and if you want to watch any other videos in Rhino and modelling and rendering please do check out the channel. Thanks for watching.